Now in this video, we're going to go through the spinal nerves. So very quickly, I want you to remember that the peripheral nervous system, meaning the nervous system that comprises of all the nerves that come out and away from the brain and the spine, and all the nerves that come back in towards the brain and the spine, that's what we refer to as the peripheral nervous system which again means that you can have nerves that come from the brain and to the brain and nerves that come from the spine and to the spine. And today we're just going to talk about those nerves that come into and out of the spine and we call those spinal nerves. So if we were to have a quick look, I've drawn up the spinal cord here and what I've done is I've drawn every single spinal nerve that comes out and in to the spine and what you'll find is that there are 31 pairs. Now I've just drawn one side but you can picture this as being mirror imaged on the other side. Now if we break this up, we can break it up similarly to how we do when we look at the vertebrae of the spine. So remember you have cervical vertebrae, thoracic vertebrae, lumbar vertebrae, sacral vertebrae and coccygeal vertebrae. Well it's the same when we look at the spinal nerves. Okay, now there's only one small difference. So remember when I told you, how do you remember the numbers of vertebrae associated with each particular region? I said remember the times in which old people tend to eat. What times do old people tend to eat? They tend to eat at 7 a.m., 12 p.m., and 5 p.m. 7 a.m., 12 p.m., 5 p.m., which means that there are seven cervical vertebrae, there are 12 thoracic vertebrae, and there are five lumbar vertebrae. And the sacral and coccygeal vertebrae, well, they are individually fused together, so don't worry about that. So when we translate that to the spinal nerves, 7, 12, and 5, well, it's exactly the same except there's one difference. Instead of there being 7 cervical nerves, there are 8. And the only reason why that's the case is if you think about having 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 cervical vertebrae, if we have a look at the cervical nerves, one comes at the top, and then the rest come out underneath. So if you were to count that, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cervical nerves, even though you only have seven cervical vertebrae. Now when we look at the remaining, so when we look at the thoracic vertebrae, there are 12, and there are also 12 thoracic nerves. When we look at the, th uh, the lumbar vertebrae, well, there's only five, and there's also five spinal nerves. So the only difference you need to remember is that of the cervical nerves. All right, now that we've stated that, and you can see I've summarized it here on the left-hand side, what I want to go through is the different spinal nerves and where they innovate, so where they go to, and also something called a plexus. Now, some of these spinal nerves, when we look at them, when they come out and away from the spine, they actually come together and form a bundle. And this bundle will branch out again at some point, and what we call that is a plexus, okay? So a plexus is a bundle of nerves that will branch back out again. So I want to show you the four main plexuses of the spinal cord, and yes, that's the plural of plexus, it's plexuses. Let's have a look. So, the first plexus that you need to know is what we call the cervical plexus. Makes sense, okay? The cervical plexus, which is made up of the cervical nerve C1, down to C4. So these nerves here, C1 to C4, they branch out of the spine and then they come together to form a bundle. And like I said, this bundle will branch back out again. Now what do we call this bundle? We call this bundle the cervical plexus. Okay, now the cervical plexus needs to go somewhere, needs to innovate some part of the body. Now the place that this innovates is the back of the head the neck the shoulders and also the main one that I want you to remember the diaphragm Now, there's a number of different nerves associated with the cervical plexus, as you can see, but there's only one that I want you to remember. The nerve that I want you to remember that's associated with the cervical plexus is that nerve that innervates the diaphragm. And that nerve is called the phrenic nerve. The phrenic nerve innervates the diaphragm. 
Now, why is this important clinically? Well, think about individuals who have been in, let's say, some sort of motor vehicle accident in which they may have severed their spine or a particular portion, may have had a hemi lesion of the spine. Somewhere in C1 to C5, this may affect their ability to breathe because it may have damaged that phrenic nerve. And that phrenic nerve innervates the diaphragm, which you know is a muscle that is the barrier between the thoracic cavity and the abdominal cavity. And this diaphragm is in a dome shape. And when you innervate it and tell it to contract, it contracts downwards and you breathe in. Okay? So if that nerve's damaged, it's going to affect breathing. Okay, what's the next plexus I want to talk about? The next plexus is what, the one that we call the brachial plexus. And the brachial plexus is C5 to T1. That's the brachial plexus, which means that cervical nerve 5, 6, 7, 8, and thoracic nerve 1 come together again to form a bundle, and we call this bundle the brachial plexus. Now, this brachial plexus, where does that innervate? Well, what's brachial mean? Brachial means arm. Remember, that's the region that the brachial refers to. So these nerves innervate the arm. Let's write that down. Innervate the arm. And what's the nerves that I want you to remember? Well, the nerves that I want you to remember, there's three of them. I want you to remember the radial nerve, the ulnar nerve, and the median nerve. The radial nerve, the ulnar nerve, and the median nerve. Should be pretty easy to remember because if you have your arm down like this, you know that you have the radial bone, the radius, right? That's the one closest to the thumb. How to remember that? Your thumb can move in a circle in a radius. Therefore, the bone closest to that's gonna be called the radius. And the ulnar bone, which is on the other side. Therefore, the radial nerve is the nerve closest to the radial bone, the radius. The ulnar nerve is that closest to the ulna, and the median nerve is the nerve that goes down the middle. Okay, so you need to remember those three nerves. Clinically, what is their importance? Let's talk about the radial nerve. There is something called Saturday night palsy, which you may or may not have heard. Some people go out, have a few drinks, get a little bit pissy, come home and fall asleep on the couch with their arm hanging over the edge of the couch. What this does is it impinges the radial nerve. Okay, it impinges on that nerve. And what that does is, well, the person wakes up with a dead arm. And that's what we call Saturday night palsy. What about the ulnar nerve? Have you ever hit what we call the funny bone? You get that tingling sensation down your arm? Well, that's when you hit that ulnar nerve. And what about the median nerve? Have you heard of something called carpal tunnel or carpal tunnel syndrome? This is where individuals have difficulty with moving, opening and closing their hand. And that's because that median nerve that goes down the middle actually goes in and innervates some of the fingers of the hand by going underneath a ligament. And this ligament is called the carpal ligament, okay? And it forms like a, a tunnel. So that median nerve has to go through that carpal tunnel. And therefore, if something happens with that nerve, and let's just say there's some damage to it, or it tightens up a little bit, what's well, going to impinge on the median nerve, and that's going to affect one's ability to use their hand, and that's carpal tunnel syndrome. So they're the three nerves of the brachial plexus that I want you to remember. What's the next plexus that I want to go through? The next plexus we call the lumbar plexus, and the lumbar plexus is L1 to L4, which again means that Lumbar nerve 1, lumbar nerve 2, lumbar nerve 3, and lumbar nerve 4 come together, form a bundle, which again branch out again, and we call that the lumbar plexus. And the lumbar plexus will innervate the anterior aspect of the thigh, the medial aspect of the thigh, and the lateral aspect of the thigh, which is the front and the sides, okay? So let's write that down. The lumbar plexus, anterior, medial, and lateral aspects of the thigh. What's the one nerve I want you to remember for the lumbar plexus? This is the femoral nerve. Femoral nerve. So if you were to have some sort of 
bulging disc at L2, for example, this may again impinge on some of these nerves here, L2, for example, and what that's going to do is affect the innervation down to the thigh and alter, possibly alter one's uh, ability to walk. And that's what we call an alteration in gait, G-A-I-T, gait. That's uh, a way somebody moves, okay? So that's the lumbar plexus. The final plexus I want to go through, we call, surprisingly, the sacral plexus. And the sacral plexus goes from L4 to S4, which means that we have lumbar nerve 4, 5, sacral nerve 1, sacral nerve 2, sacral nerve 3, and sacral nerve 4 again coming together to form a bundle, which again branches out again. And we call that the sacral plexus. Now, where does the sacral plexus innervate? First, I want you to remember the lumbar plexus was the front and sides of the thigh. So, what's left? The back of the thigh, the posterior aspect. So, the sacral plexus will innervate the back of the thigh. So, let's write that down. Posterior thigh. And everything, it innervates everything below the knee. Okay? So, let's write below knee. Now, Everything below the knee, that's a lot, right? So the nerve that you need to remember is what we call, and I'm sure you've heard it before, the sciatic nerve. And the sciatic nerve, well, think about what if you had sciatica. Have you heard of sciatica before? So some issue with the sciatic nerve, what happens? Well, people get immense amounts of pain going from their butt down through the back of their thigh and into their leg. And sometimes this will stop an individual from being able to use their leg properly and their foot tends to drop. And that's just called foot drop. Okay? And that's what happens if there's damage to this sciatic nerve or some part of this sacral plexus. So you can see the four plexuses of the spinal cord, the cervical plexus, the brachial plexus, the lumbar plexus, and the sacral plexus, I've told you where it innervates, and I've told you the main nerves that I want you to remember for each of these plexuses. Now, you hopefully are asking the question or thinking, why isn't there a plexus at the thoracic region? And the answer to that is, think about where would these nerves, nerves of the thoracic region, where would they innervate? Well, they would wrap around and innervate the ribs. So they'll go through and innervate the intercostal muscles and they'll innervate the lower aspect of the abdomen. Okay? So the thoracic nerves, basically they come out and they innervate the intercostal muscles and the inferior aspect of the abdomen. Okay? And that is basically a quick run through of the spinal nerve. So I hope that was helpful.